Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mo Jackson. and today we're taking a look at the new public beta versions of Serato DJ Pro and Serato DJ Lite. They're both numbered at version 3.0.0. That's quite a big round number. And so it's fairly natural that Serato were going to bring a big new feature to these releases. And that feature is stem separation. Now, let's be clear, we've seen this before in other DJ software. Serato are by no means the first company to do this. So the question is, what kind of new stuff are they bringing to this technology? So yes, version 3.0.0 is all about stems. In recent days, Serato have been showing it to big artists and sharing their feedback, and clearly some folks are rather excited about it. Before we go any further, I need to clarify my own position. When I looked at a recent big update of Algorithms DJ, I said I wasn't entirely sold on stems as an alternative to EQ, and I'm still not. Making this video has helped me figure out exactly why. My thing is, with regular EQ, although every track is different, the controls are always consistent. The bass EQ will always cut and boost the same frequencies by the same amount, and the same goes for the mid and treble. Same thing applies to filters too. But with stems, because they're being calculated by the software, that consistency is just not there. The results you get will be completely different for every single track, and unless you've experimented with a track ahead of time, you simply don't know if the results will be great or kind of sucky. So as a DJ who doesn't do routines beyond a few set pieces, that inconsistency just puts me off the whole idea to some degree, and it would be dishonest of me to pretend that I'm suddenly a huge fan of the concept just because it's now in the software that I use most often. Thankfully, however, Serato have added a little extra spice, which has piqued my interest a little more though. Let's show you how it works. So I'm going to talk you through how this thing all works. You know, it's not really that complicated to get going with it. If you've got regular hardware like a mixer with the pads on it already, then it just kind of works already. You'll see when you open up the beta version, that you have this new pad mode, which is the stems mode there. That will show up a bit more in a minute. I'm gonna switch over to the extended waveform mode because stuff happens with the waveforms. So we want to see that. There is a new stems crate that will appear by default in your library. And there are a couple of things we need to do in the preferences. So firstly, we're gonna replace a pad mode with stems. Now, of course you can MIDI map them to whatever you want, right? If you allow hardware remapping on your device, you can remap the buttons, the pads to, to anything you like, but I'm just going to replace a pad mode with those. On the Rain 70, the A-Track Edition here, I've got the option to replace Loop Roll or Sampler. Now I'm going to replace Sampler, so when I switch to Sampler mode, that is now the Stems mode. We've also got another option down below, which is what happens on Song Load. So here we have, you know, play from start, instant doubles, all that kind of stuff, which I all have turned on. Then we have Analyze Stem, so I'm going to turn this off, I'm going to turn it on again. So now, when I load a track, it's going to analyze the stems for it. And this is a warning that comes up because this is the thing. This analyzing for stems is quite CPU intensive. It does put a big demand on your computer. If you have an older or slower machine, you might not want to have the analysis of stems happening every time that you load a track to a deck because it, it is going to put a lot of demand there. So it's up to you really how you're going to do it if you've got lots of power you can afford to have that then by all means have it analyzed instantly because it says there you know analyzing stems on song load will speed up stem playback time but will increase computer load and may have a performance impact so you just got to kind of bear that in mind now there's something else to kind of remember there as well this stems crate if you drag stuff to this crate ahead of time so before your gig or whatever else even in offline mode you can drag tracks into that stems crate and it will analyze for stems and it will store that analysis for you. So it lives next to the music file inside your folders on your computer, which sounds like a great idea. You think, well, why don't I just drag all of my local music into the stems crate and then I'll have all my stems there ready to go. The problem is that it takes up a lot of space. So it's not something I would suggest you do unless you have absolutely loads of space on your computer. And these days, you know, the cost of SSDs in things like MacBooks, yeah, it's rare that people have that much space to play with. The other thing to bear in mind is that streaming music, so for example, all my stuff here on BeatSource, that will be analyzed when you load it to a deck, but you can't drag it to that crate and analyze it ahead of time. That has to be done on the fly. It's not, you know, in terms of the speed, the time it takes to do when you load a track, it's pretty quick. That's not really the problem. It is just quite demanding. So again, older computer, slower computer less powerful computer 
you may wish to have that option turned off and just kind of analyze. If you do have that option turned off to analyze as soon as you load to a deck, it doesn't stop you using stems. It just means when you go to use them, it will take a second to analyze them. It won't do it automatically. It'll only do it when you start to use stems. And so that will take a few seconds to do. So yeah, it swings and roundabouts either way. You just got to bear that in mind. This is not a, you know, a very lightweight process. It's quite full on for your computer. So in this case, I'm going to play from Beat Source. This is a streaming track. I'm going to load it up. This will just save the stems file temporarily. You know, it won't be a, a long-term storage thing. It's just going to save it temporarily. Let's get that playing. Yeah. And then we can get going and just see what it does. So we can take out. We take out the melody, the bass, and the drums. And that's pretty good. You know, taking out just a vocal. I, I stand by it. You know, I don't think any AI, any kind of technology will ever be able to completely get a clean acapella from any track. But that's not bad going. But as you can see, look. We've got now a grey waveform because there's no vocal here and all of the stuff that I've turned off is greyed out on the waveform. So as we bring things in, there's the melody. You can see that's blue. Bring in the bass and that's red. And this is quite similar to the way they do the real-time waveforms in Serato Studio. So that's a great comparison. You know, It builds up the waveform as you add elements to your track in Serato Studio. It's a similar kind of technology. And it just means that when you're playing through a track, you need to see what you're actually going to be listening to in a second i want to drop in on that bass note or whatever i can do that and there's the drums which i actually think are probably the strength the biggest strength of this particular version of stems is the drums do tend to sound very fat and very clean which is great so let's bring everything back in now that's obviously quite similar to what we've had in other software before you know you've basically just got effectively you're replacing eq with these four elements that you can cut in and out. So we'll get back to where we've got bass and drums together. You'll see that coming in. In comes the melody. There's no vocal there anyway, but this is where it gets really interesting. This is the stuff that I really like. Okay, so now we've got a full track. We've got melody, bass, drums, and vocal. These buttons below are the effects for your stems. So, and you can echo out just the vocal. Now, for me, that's a very, very nice tool. That's actually the button out of all the th all the stuff that's going on with these stems. That's the bit that's got me most excited. Is that vocal echo? Some immediate uses I thought of for that, you know, straight away. If you're the kind of DJ who cuts things out, cuts out when the, the crowd is singing along to a big moment in a chorus, well, instead of doing a filter or a fader down, now you can just cut the vocal out and make it instrumental while the crowd is singing along and then bring the vocal straight back in again. And it does it with an echo, so it sounds super clean. You know, it sounds rhythmical, sounds clean. You can't adjust the beat length on that echo or anything right now. I would hope they would add that in the future. It is just a one beat echo right now. So that is very neat. I love that. You can do the same thing with the instrumental. So you can create an instant a cappella out for any track. With Again, with that clean echo. You're not just going like that and doing multiple pads or whatever. It just echoes it out. You've got the breaker, which I'm less a fan of myself, but it depends. I don't use break effects at all really in my mixing, but... I'm definitely more of a kind of echo person, and you can echo the drums out as well. Cool up 
At this point, we need to circle back to a couple of things that came up in that demo. First, the CPU intensiveness of the processing. It's real and it's pretty major. Here you can see the difference between playing tracks in Serato DJ Pro 2.6 and the 3.0 beta with stems analysis happening. This is on a 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro with an i7 chip, and I can tell you it is working the machine hard with the fans going constantly. I did a similar test with Algorithms DJ and Virtual DJ, and DJ seems to get close to that, but for much shorter periods, and Virtual DJ takes the crown for now as its stems analysis barely seems to trouble the CPU at all. Of course, we're looking at a beta version here, and I'm sure there will be more optimization done by Serato before the full release. But if you are one of the 2015 MacBook Pro Till I Die gang, I'm confident in saying that using stems on the fly is not in your future. But why not drag all of your music to the stems crate and analyze ahead of time, Mojax, I hear you ask. Well, putting aside the fact that I use a lot of beat source music and you can't do that with streaming tracks, the storage requirements for the stems files are no joke. Here are some examples, with stems files in some cases being more than twice the size of the original music file. So unless you have a tremendous amount of spare space on your drive, you'll want to keep the number of tracks in that stems crate quite low. In terms of the quality of the stem separation itself, I am impressed. What Serato seemed to have done is somehow gated out a lot of the weird artifacts in the high end, which are often present on other platforms, and they've done something with the drums so that when you solo those, they generally really bang. As I said in the demo though, just getting a really clean a cappella from any track you throw in remains a hit and miss affair, and I suspect it always will be. Even Skynet wouldn't be able to do it. But you can judge for yourself. Elsewhere on this channel, you'll find a video where I do a direct comparison without commentary between the stem separation of algorithms DJ, virtual DJ, and this. I haven't discussed Serato DJ Lite yet, but let's do that quickly. It features the four direct stems controls, which work the same as in Pro, but the stems effects pads below are not usable. This is kind of what I would have expected and completely fair in my opinion, as is the way with Lite in general. It all works perfectly well, but is designed to make you want to upgrade to Pro eventually. All good. To wrap up, I do want to give you my thoughts on how the stems are controlled. The idea of replacing a pad mode with stems is cool, in my opinion, although how much will depend on your hardware. On the Range 70, for example, I would have to lose either Loop Roll or Sampler, both of which I would miss. On the DJI MS9, I also have the option to replace Slicer, which I definitely wouldn't miss at all. And you might find that some hardware, which doesn't have the full 8 pads, doesn't offer that option to you at all, like the Hercules DJ Control Starlight that I tried. And there is one big oversight, at least for now. Official Serato accessory controllers like the DDJ SP1 and XP2 don't work natively with stems at all. To me, the DDJ XP2 seems like the dream stems controller, with its 16 pads on each deck, covering two modes on each side, so I hope Serato do that mapping without delay. That being said, you can still MIDI map the stems controls to whatever you like with any hardware. It's just worth keeping the restrictions in mind if you prefer a fully plug-and-play experience. So there you go, a first look at the new public beta versions of Serato DJ Pro and Serato DJ Lite. This is pretty impressive stuff. Not because of the stems tech in itself. Like, that's very good. Don't get me wrong. It's great. Sounds excellent. Might be the best one yet. I'm not sure. We'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons and let you know. But what they've achieved here is getting someone like me, who could not care less about stems until now, totally ambivalent about it, not interested in replacing my EQs with stems. Just not. They've got me excited about stems. And it's all about that bottom row of pads. Because that elevates it from, yeah, just some kind of EQ replacement to actually being a performance tool. Like, I can totally envisage myself using that at gigs, cutting out the vocals, you know, dropping out the drums and stuff with the clean echo out. And yeah, that just for me... It works. It suits the way that I work as a DJ. It suits the way that I perform. So I'm excited to really get to know that in a live context. Now, I won't be doing that for a while because remember, this is a public beta, not a full release. If you're a Serato user, you can download it and try it out for yourself right now. But that needs to stay at home or in the studio. This is not the time to install this and go and do a big club or a festival with it. Absolutely not because it is a beta. It's not finished. So by all means, Download the beta, play with it, give your feedback to Serato, report any bugs, etc. But don't rely on it for actual gigs at this time because it just it isn't ready. If it was ready, it would be a full release. It wouldn't be a beta. So please just bear that in mind. And I'd love to hear from you guys and girls in the comments. Have you been using stems with other software up to now? What do you think about the whole idea? Are you unconvinced like me or is it something you've jumped really into with both feet? I don't know. I'd love to hear from you. And also, once you've tried this beta... 
Let us know your thoughts on how Serato have done it as well. Because yeah, it is a beta. You can try it if you're a user. It doesn't cost you anything. Give it a go and let us know what you think. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.